If there was no one to judge you, would you make different choices? Why make choices in your life based on what everyone else thinks is best for you? What about trusting your intuition and just going with what you think? Everyone has the power to make inspired choices. Get ready to listen, share, and experience the creativity that is you. Now, here's the host of Inspired Choices, Intuitive Life Coach, Christine McIver. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's Christine back online again. I'm so glad you're with me today. And um, if you've never been online before, this is a program where we talk about how you have the power to make inspired choices. And, and it's about learning and getting tools and helping you to move forward in your life. So before we get started, um, I just want to check in about last week. Last week we were talking about... Um, the, the power of our words and how we can choose words to help move us forward. And I sent out a challenge, and I'd love to hear from someone who took the challenge. It was a one-week challenge to consciously choose your words and to see how it would impact. So I would love to hear from you. Let me know how that went. I know that that's something that I'm consciously doing is choosing my words so that I can move forward even when perhaps you or I are having challenges. When you're actually choosing words that are a direction where you want to go, you take back your power. Not being a victim, not saying, oh, I feel terrible about this or I feel terrible about that. You can feel something, but then choose words to help you move in a new direction. So be brave, call in, email in, let me know how you're doing. So this week, what are we talking about? This week, we're talking about your feelings. And the tagline is, follow your feelings, they know the way. When you embrace all of your feelings, whether they're positive feelings or negative feelings, they empower you so you can choose to move forward and you can use them to your advantage. So no feelings are really bad or good. They're all valuable, though, to you. They're only good or bad if you give them that energy, that power. But all emotions and all feelings tell you where you are at today. And they also help to lead you to your next step. When when we are talking about feelings, uh, we are also talking about, well, where do we get to our feelings? The first thing is we start with our thoughts. A thought has no power. A thought is just something that comes into your brain. And as we said last week, everyone has 60,000 thoughts a day. And 80% of those thoughts are the same that you had yesterday. So you have a thought. And it either turns into words that come out of your mouth or feelings that you experience. And until... You actually attach a feeling to a thought. It has no impact on you. Correct? Now, we are either operating from our conscious mind or our unconscious mind. And you may have heard this information before, but I think it's worth repeating. Dr. Bruce Lipton, he's a scientist, and he's someone that I've heard many times at the uh, I Can Do It conference put on through Hay House. And Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about how the conscious mind holds 5%, is 5% made up of 5% of your brain, and your subconscious mind is made up of 95% of your brain. Now, the conscious mind is where we actually hold wishes and dreams, conscious dreams, and the subconscious mind is where we actually have our habits. So whether it's the habit of running our heart or running our, the blood through our veins or running the way that we um, believe or think from past history, that's all habitual. And those things that are in the subconscious mind are our beliefs as well. And most of our beliefs, believe it or not, are formed between the ages of zero and six years old. So we actually receive a lot of our beliefs before we're really conscious. And then they go into a habit. And the Really, it happens to go on to autopilot. So a lot of the things that you do or feel or the choices that you've made have been habits that you formed very, very young. And it's from the people around you. You may have formed most of your beliefs from your parents or the community around you. And, you know, they may not be serving you. That doesn't mean that they are bad. They just don't work for you. Each and every one of us are different. And nothing that has happened to you has to take control over you. It can actually teach you as to what you want and what you don't want. You can become a deliberate creator of your life if you consciously choose thoughts 
and you consciously become aware of your feelings and what you want and what you don't want, okay? You have the power, and nobody is a victim. I have had many, many things in my life come to me, and many, many things happen to me, and I used to think that I had the worst life in the world. I, had a, I have a girlfriend, and she knows who she is, that tells me constantly, you should write a book. And I say to her, why in the heck would I want to write a book about my life? Because it has really sucked. But you know what? I've now come to know that it hasn't been that bad. It's only taught me the things that I don't want and the things that I do want by the experiences and my feelings around those experiences. And I can take control. And what those things have done is they have helped me to choose differently. So a lot of people say to us, how do I know, Christine, what is a good feeling and what is a bad feeling thought? Well, it's really simple and sometimes not easy, but it's how do you feel? If you feel good about something, if something makes you feel good, and I'm going to give you a silly little example that I often do. I start with something small, but if you have vegetables in front of you and you have broccoli in front of you and you have spinach in front of you, And if you're me, you look at the broccoli and you go, oh, yes, I want to eat that. I love broccoli. And you look at the spinach and you go, oh, yuck. I don't like spinach. I don't like how that makes me feel. I don't like the taste of it. Then I know very quickly what I'm going to go towards and what will actually nourish me. Now, of course, there's nourishment in spinach. That's not what I'm saying. But my feelings about something teach me what works for me and what doesn't. Now, every experience that you have will teach you something. So sometimes you may think, well, this feels okay, and you do it, and then you get a result that you don't like. Well, then it has taught you something new about what you want and what you would like to change. So you can reprogram your beliefs when you become aware of them. So those, don't be afraid that you have all these habits and all these thoughts and all these beliefs in your mind that you're not aware of. You just become aware of them one step at a time. Be gentle with yourself. So if you're experiencing something and you're saying, I don't like this feeling, I don't like what I'm experiencing, I don't like how this person is making me feel, I don't like how I feel when I'm at work, I don't like how I feel when this person talks to me that way, It's teaching you something about yourself, and you can begin to change how you experience your life by those feelings. So you can start to reprogram yourself. Now, how do you know if you need to reprogram? How do you know if you've been making the right choices? We often get stuck in fear, and remember what fear is. False evidence appearing real. We get stuck there because we don't know if we are feeling something good or bad or we're believing something good or bad. Well, here's a very simple way of finding out if your beliefs perhaps need to be tweaked or reprogrammed. Look at your past experiences. Look at the past choices that you've made. If they, when you look at them and you think about them, give you a feeling that uh, this doesn't feel good, I didn't have fun. I wish I could redo that, then perhaps it's you need to start looking a little bit deeper and looking at your beliefs around that. When I was in a marriage and I was unhappy and I kept choosing to stay in that marriage, well, then I kept myself stuck, right? And there was a belief in me. And I'll tell you what the belief was in me. I did not believe that I deserved to be happy. You know, like many of us, we have had challenges in our lives and in growing up. And I have a wonderful family, and it's diverse, and it's, it's crazy, and it's funny, and it's, it's amazing. And it never was perfect, and it never will be. And that's okay. Because by what I learned in my family growing up, my family of origin, I learned many, many things. And some of those things taught me that I should be second to a man. And some of those things taught me that I deserve to speak my truth. All of my experiences taught me something. And then the power comes to me. And the power comes to you in choosing what you're going to do with that information. I do not blame my parents, nor do I blame anybody in my life. I now choose 
to take back my power and choose to see that everything that came into my life came to serve me. Now, you don't have to believe what I believe, but I'm here to teach you what I know, and what I know has worked for me. It's also very, very important as you begin to look at these things that you suspend judgment about other people, the choices that they made as it interacted with you, and about the choices you've made. I spent a lot of time beating myself up in my choices because I felt bad. I thought, well, it's my own you know, neglect in what I chose that has led me to where I am. Well, you know what? No, enough. I'm not going to stay stuck down in there. I want to live a life of joy. So therefore, I'm choosing to suspend my judgment about myself. And I want to begin to move in the direction of pursuing my happiness, pursuing promises I want to make to myself. You know, um, one of the best quotes I've ever heard is, life's longest journey is 18 inches, and that's from your mind to your heart. If we can get out of our mind, out of judgment, and out of, uh, you know, suspecting or criticizing ourselves constantly, and just move into what feels good and what our heart wants, we can move into a better relationship with ourselves and with our life. It's very, very important that we do this. Now, we're going to go to commercial shortly and I would love to hear from someone and I would love to help you begin to claim your peace and your joy and your passion and remember you always have a choice whether you're going to be in love or in fear about something and it's through your feelings that you learn how to begin to choose that and all of your feelings can teach you so when we get back from break I'd love to hear from you send in your email questions or give me a call and we will uh, go over how you can better make choices. Uh, if this is the first time I'm on the call, be sure to connect with me on uh, my face, my website, Twitter, or Facebook. And after the break, we'll take some of your calls. Okay, thank you. This is Inspired Choices with Intuitive Life Coach Christine McIver. To be a part of the program today, you can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Okay, everyone, if you're just tuning in, we are talking about your feelings and how they can be powerful for you. Positive or negative, they can lead you in a direction. And what are feelings? Feelings are no more than your intuition, okay? Have you ever walked into a room and you went, uh, something's off in here? You haven't looked at anybody's eyes, you haven't heard anything, but you got a feeling. Well, that feeling is your intuition that something's up, and those are amazing messages. So listening to your body is so very, very important because it's your body's way, your soul's way of letting you know what is working and what isn't. Okay, so we have Laura on the line. She's calling from Canada, my favorite country in the world. Hi, Laura, are you there? Yeah, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm good. Good. Excellent. Do you have a question today? I do have a question. Okay. I'm in the midst of uh, going through something, and I deal with lawyers a lot, my lawyer. Mm-hmm. And um, every time I get an email from my lawyer, I get anxiety. I get stressed. I get my shoulders feel heavy, I get nervous, and I just think negative. And I, I just can't seem to get rid of those feelings. How do I, how do, I do that? Okay, so let, let's be really clear. You're receiving an email. Is, are you feeling this when you read the email, or are you feeling this before you even read the email? Before I even read it. Okay. I have to see it sent to me and that it's from my lawyer. Okay, so do you know what the word assum- uh, assumption or assume means? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so what you're doing is you have, excellent, I'm glad you do, uh, right? I'm not going to say it on air, but yeah. we all know what ASS, <laughs> ASS, right? You're assuming something that maybe is or is not true. And when we go into assumption is what I was talking about earlier. It is your belief. It's your belief that you either received as you were growing up or through your experiences that when you see an email or you get contacted by a lawyer, and trust me, Laura, you're not alone, when you are receiving that, it is bad news. Mm -hmm. Okay? So your connection to your belief is creating your feelings because you're having this belief about something then you're getting a thought in your mind oh my goodness 
this has got to be bad. It's from a lawyer, and lawyer equals bad belief, correct? Yes. And then you immediately have an, an emotional reaction to it, a negative feeling comes up. And you don't even know what the lawyer is going to say. No. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. So, I mean, you, you're obviously in those two seconds when you see the lawyer's name or email come up, you're not going through that intellect. But your body is giving you feelings about your belief system and how, how it's impacting you. So tell me, what would you like to feel? If you could design this, what would you like to feel about, about receiving a, a letter from a lawyer? Oh, uh, calm and that, well, whatever it is, it is. Okay. It's not going to bother me. It's, I'm, I'm going to be calm and carry on. Okay. That's what I'd like to feel. That's what you'd like to feel. Okay. So have you ever worked on forgiveness? Yes, yeah, somewhat. When you first started doing forgiveness work, did were you saying the words? Were they, was it like a mechanical thing, I forgive you, I forgive you, but in your heart or in your head you're thinking, not a damn chance? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> that is called, you know, consciously moving forward, right? You're consciously making those choices because you have a desire on the other side of forgiveness, right? You have a desire to release yourself from that prison of being angry or resentful with someone, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you begin saying these forgiveness words, you don't believe it, but then it becomes a habit and Slowly but slowly, you start to put new beliefs and new thoughts into your mind. And that's how you move from anger and resentment to forgiveness. Now, sometimes that road is short and sometimes that road is long. But you can do that. So you can do the same, use that same process when you are thinking about your lawyer or a lawyer or legal system in general. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes... You might get stopped by the police, and what's our automatic reaction? Oh, my gosh, was I speeding? Yeah. And and the police officer may just be coming up to say, hey, you know, your rear light is out. Could you get that fixed? Or the road's out up ahead. You, you need to turn around, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So it's, it's the attachment you have to that, your belief system. So if you can begin to even write out how you want to feel and you begin to – put that through your thought process on a regular basis, you can take the energy away from that lawyer just by that, by looking at it in a different way. You have the power to do that. Okay. Now, you don't automatically know every single time what is going to be inside that email, do you? No. No, I never do. You never do, okay. (laughs) So so you are automatically going into fear, aren't you? Yes. Do you remember what fear stands for? Yeah. What does it stand for? (laughs) I have it wrote down. (laughs) Good, you've been listening. So it stands for false evidence appearing real. So that's your old belief system is suddenly coming up with, oh, it's going to be bad. Meanwhile, you don't have any evidence that it is or is it not. Now, remember, even if it is bad news. Mm Mm-hmm. You are still in control of how you are going to allow that to impact your life. You are always in control of your life. You're not in control of someone else's. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So write out how you want to feel, Laura, and then write out an an affirmation or a statement on the lawyer's letters have no power over me. The lawyer's letters have no power over me. Some affirmation that speaks to you, okay? Mm-hmm. How's that feel? That feels good. It Excellent. Feels Thank like you. So it will help me. Good. Help me I'm glad. Time. Good. All the best, Laura. Thank okay. you for calling in. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Remember, everyone, your life purpose is to connect to your joy. And your feelings can tell you whether you are in the right direction towards your life purpose or towards your joy or not. And then you begin to choose something different. Okay, we have another caller on the line. We have Betty. Are you there, Betty? Uh, Yes, I am. Hi, Betty. How are you today? I'm all right. And yourself? Good. How are you feeling today? I'm, well, that's that's a a good question because I know how I want to feel. Um, Okay. 
I want to feel at peace. I want to feel that I've made a contribution to the world. And But I'm a doer also. So once I recognize how I want to feel, then it's sort of like my brain goes into the got to do mode. And mm-hmm. I figure out, okay, what do I need to do to create how how I feel that way or how I want to, like, what do I got to do? So then I, I, I jump back into, okay, I'm, I'm a doing person again. So okay. it's sort of, I, I shut off the feeling. So it's like a vicious circle, right? Okay, so tell me, if you can, for just a second, think of that moment when you go back into your doing. Okay. How are you feeling when you're in the quote-unquote doing stage? It, it's more like anxiety setting in. Like okay, I gotta so, do, gotta do, gotta do. <laughs> so, um, where do you feel that in your body? Yeah, probably my stomach muscles just, just everything tensed up. Like all my tensed muscles up. tensed up. Okay, so your body is giving you indications that something is out of alignment. Something doesn't feel good. Okay? Okay. So that's your intuition speaking to you or your feelings are speaking to you that maybe the doing phase is not what you should be focusing on right at the moment. So when you want to feel differently, sometimes the real work is between our head and our heart. It's not in the doing, doing, doing stages of our life. And if you could be more gentle with yourself, Betty, if you could very gently just say, I'm doing the best I can and I'm choosing to learn and grow. Okay. I'm I'm doing the best I can and I'm choosing to learn and grow. And understand and recognize in yourself, I am choosing to take responsibility for my feelings. I am. I'm paying attention. So you start to feel anxious about something. Well, you don't have to fix anything. Start with step number one is awareness. Be in that place of awareness. Sometimes we jump from awareness in a half a second into doing, and we start, we're, we're like running around like a chicken with our mm-hmm. head cut off. That's thinking exactly we're doing... it. <laughs> okay, yeah, good. So I've, and, and I've we, lost, we, okay, we, my whole, where was I going with this again? <laughs> right, and, and we need to spend more time in the feeling place, and what are we experiencing, and what do I want What do I want? You know, it's like, do you want to be swinging in the wind with your life or do you want to be solidly grounded and driving in the direction of your dreams? A little bit both. So you want to be swinging in the wind? For the adventure part of it, yes. Just for the unknown part of it, yes. Okay, so that's great. Right, grounding is important. But if you could, Betty, be flying in the direction of what gives you joy... And be discovering, but not be attached to negative experiences, just learning from them and and learning from them by saying, how do I feel? How do I feel about this right now? Well, I feel good. Excellent. Keep going. Stay on the path. Your GPS is telling you to go forward. And if you say, how am I feeling? Oh, I'm feeling anxious. Okay, put the brakes on. Maybe take out the map. Do you want to make a de- take a detour? That could be as it's related to your job. That could be as it's related to a relationship you're having. That could be re- as it's related to how you are being with yourself. Sometimes we stay so long in self-criticism that we get a terrible feeling, and then we start to beat ourselves up even more, and it just keeps us locked down even further, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you can stay in the place of experiencing your feelings and just gently noticing, gently noticing, that doing phase doesn't have to take over you. Staying a little longer in the doing, in the um, feeling place and just noticing and gently moving yourself through and know that nothing bad is ever going to happen to you that you can't make a better choice in the next step. Okay. So it's definitely going to take a lot of practice to learn it. Yes. You know, not jumping, like right. you say, right instantly into the doing. Right. And you know what? One of the very best, simplest things that I often suggest to everyone that has these anxiety feelings is breathe. Breathe. 
whether you are someone who meditates regularly or you're someone that's just learning to slow yourself down, breathe. It is the most empowering thing, and it brings you out of anxiety. Thank you so much for calling in today, okay. Betty. We're going to go to break, and when we get back, we're going to take some more calls and take some of your emails. Okay? Thank you. This is Inspired Choices with Intuitive Life Coach Christine McIver. To be a part of the program today, please. you can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Okay, welcome back, everyone. If you're just tuning in, I'm Christine McIver, and we are talking about feelings and how they can really be empowering and sometimes take over um, your whole life if they're if they're too overpowering. One thing that I wanted to touch on today was about what's going on in the universe, and um, maybe some of you have been experiencing what I've been experiencing, some challenges with communication. Um, Mercury is in retrograde, and I, I am not an astrologer. I don't know all what all of that means, but what I do mean, know, is that it means that there is a lot of challenges in the universe. With Mercury in retrograde, what it is doing is it's pulling on energy, and it is impacting both technology and communication. I, I wonder if anybody else has been experiencing that. I'm sure that you are. I, I know that there's a number of people who are listening that I've been sending emails to. They haven't been getting them, and, and we've been having to go back and forth and check in, and lots of technology challenges, both on Facebook and my website. Oh, my gosh, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. And in the past, when I wasn't aware of that, those feelings would be very frustrating for me. And now what I do is I go, oh, that knowledge has given me power to relax into what's going on and not to allow those feelings to overtake me. Now, before we go on, I need to do a shout out to some people I used to work with. I know that they're listening to the people at Dieter's in Waterloo. I want to say hi to everybody who's listening, and I, I'm very happy you're, you're tuning in. I know lots of my friends are tuning in and, and uh, people that I'm meeting through my website and Facebooks. Thank you so, so much. So before we get back to our next caller, what we want to do is we want to talk a little bit about um, your words and how your feelings and your words can really impact you. So I want to ask you this question. Do you spend time each day complaining and gossiping, putting other people down, or reviewing all that is wrong in your life? Do you spend a lot of time doing that? Do you call that friend, and I know I used to do this, do you call that friend who you know will get into the quote-unquote bitching session with you? Sorry if that word bothers anyone, but it really hits home. Or are you calling someone who is happy in spite of the challenges that they are experiencing and someone who won't feed into your need to, to bleed, feed into your need to get into the pity party? You have power in your words, and you are creating your experiences and the feelings you are attaching to those experiences in your lives through the words. And if you are not feeling great, step back. Step back, take a look at your feelings and what you have been choosing, because they truly, truly are having an impact on your life. Nobody has control over you, only you. There is only the only things that can be controlling are what you think, what you choose, and how you feel. You are creating your life, and even though it feels like people are doing things to you, in that very second as that happens, you have a choice. And I call it a choice point. You have a choice whether you are going to allow those feelings to impact you in a negative way or a positive way, and whether you're going to say, that doesn't work for me. Sometimes it's about putting up boundaries and saying, you know, I'm not happy. This does not work for me, and I need to choose differently. Now, I have an email here from Kay, and she has a really powerful question. And thank you so much, Kay, for this question. She says, how do you know the feeling isn't going to end up being the wrong thing to do in the end? She says, one day I'd like to get married, but my current relationship, my partner does not believe in marriage and says it will never happen if I stay. How do I really want to have, what do I really want to have in my life if I really want to have this? 
How do I move forward and be content? Well, you know what, Kay? It comes down to how you feel. If you begin to evaluate how you feel in relationship to what this person said, it's not about the person for a minute, just detach for a minute, but how do you feel? If this is something that is important to you, how are you going to feel if you stay in relationship with this person and something that you want, something that you wish to have is never going to be? How are you going to feel? Well, I can tell by your email that you're not feeling good. So if you're not feeling good, stepping back from this and saying, how important is this to me? How important is this to me in relative to this relationship? Now, I'm not saying end this relationship, not at all. But you're the one that is going to be living with these choices. And if you are following what feels better, knowing you cannot control that other person, you can only make choices based on what works for you, you need to decide what is going to feel good and what is not going to feel good. I know that that's not a definite answer, but the feelings that you are having are going to tell you whether you're going to be happy or not, and you do it from this moment. And then when you make your decision, honor the other person in the decision that they're making as well. We oftentimes will be attached to how people react to our choices. And if we want someone to honor how we feel, we need to honor they, how they feel and their choices as well, okay? So when we can detach to their choices and honor that they are doing the best for them and they also deserve to be happy, just like we deserve to be happy, things will move in a better direction. You may not end up being with that person, but you are going to be moving in a better direction. It is very complicated sometimes to think, well, I want that person to do this. But we can't control anyone else. We can only control ourselves. And when you get to a better feeling place, when you get to a happier feeling place, you are going to be vibrating and sending out energy of joy, and people are attracted to that. We are attracted to people who are positive. We are attracted to people who are happy. We are attracted to people who are in that position because they are also successful in many, many areas of their life. Look at people like Bill Gates. Is that a happy man or an unhappy man? Well, I would say he's a happy man. Now, a lot of people may say, well, he's happy because he has all that money. But I can tell you verbatim that there's no way that he got to where he is by being angry, sad, depressed, gossiping, criticizing, or blaming. There's no way. He had to be in a better feeling place. You have to get to that better feeling place first before you can begin to attract to you the prosperity that you desire, whether it's through relationships, whether it's through your job, whether it's through health. Whatever it is, it starts out with your thoughts, your beliefs, and your feelings. This is the place to start. The place to always do the most work is inside of you. It's not. It doesn't have to do with outside of you. When you can spend the time to do some internal work and then from that self-awareness, from that growth, from that place of what do I really, really want, what is really top priority for me, and make some promises to yourself that you're going to drive in that direction, then you can very easily make some better choices. But when you are swinging in the wind with, oh, I want this and I want that and I want this person to do this and I want this person to do that, you are scattered. You're all over the place. And if you want to figure out whether you're scattered or not, Sometimes just look around your house. If your house is disorganized, if your workplace is disorganized, you are often struggling then with scattered thoughts, with scattered emotions, with scattered feelings. I want to re, re, uh, say this one more time. Please be gentle with yourself. Please understand that if this is the first time that you've begun down this path, that you are learning, and it can get easier and easier. If you have 60,000 thoughts a day, and you can begin today just choosing one new thought, you will begin to drive in a better direction. And if tomorrow you have a new thought, and the next day you have a new thought, and you can begin to grow those positive thoughts, 
things will change. One shift, one percentage shift a day, a year from now, will give you a 365% shift. Okay, so I want to go to another question. I have a question from Enza. Enza says that sometimes if you're on a spiritual path, you're on a spiritual journey, and you know you're where you're exactly where you're supposed to be, what do you do when feelings of fear or doubt or sometimes even anxiety come in? Well, I'll tell you one of the strongest things, one of the biggest things that I have done is stepping back again, because what does fear stand for? False evidence appearing real. Well, what I know to do is to look at the facts. So the facts are, number one, you've said you're on a spiritual path. Ask yourself, does that feel good or not? Well, I'm going to assume that it does feel good because you said that you know you're exactly where you should be. Okay, so number one, you're on that path. Now look for evidence. Look for evidence of positive things that have happened, even if they are tiny, small, positive things. Okay, so let me give you an example. Right before I started to do this radio show, I started to get anxious, and I'm sure if you've listened, you can tell that I was quite anxious on my first call, and I, you know, I definitely was anxious, and and when I went to do the second call, and then when I went to do today, there was anxious feelings coming in, fear, false evidence appearing real, so what do I do immediately? I go, hang on a second, let's look for some facts, let's look for some evidence because I don't know what the future is going to be. You don't know what the future is going to be. So let's look for some evidence. Well, evidence number one is I didn't, I didn't collapse. I didn't die and I made it through the call. Okay. That's evidence number one. Evidence number two is I started to feel better. So I know that that was, that was a confirmation for me that I was on the right path. Evidence number three, I got good feedback from people. So what I was doing was serving, and that was exactly what my intention was to serve. So the evidence for me, the facts for me, were positive. And so when I can quickly go to that positive evidence, I can shut down that fear in an instant. Now, you know, I've talked about vision boards and how vision boards can help lead you in your future move you forward towards the dreams and goals that you have well a a fax board can take the power out of fear so if you have a fear that you identify keeps repeating and keeps repeating and keeps repeating i strongly encourage you to sit down and write out some facts do this when you are feeling strong and grounded, maybe you've done a little bit of meditation, maybe you've gone for a walk, maybe you've even taken a shower or you've, you've got into a better relaxing state, and sit down and start to write out the facts. So I'm nervous, maybe somebody's saying out there, I'm nervous about a new job. Okay, well, what are you nervous about? Well, I'm nervous I might flunk the interview. Have you ever flunked the interview? Have you ever flunked an interview before? No, but I was nervous going in. So did you do well in the interview? Yes. You didn't faint? No. Did they ask you questions? Yes. Have you ever been hired through an interview before? Yes. Okay. Write those facts down. Ask yourself some very simple, simple questions and keep reviewing the facts board, whatever it is, and see how those facts feel. Coming back to the power of your feelings will always, always lead you in the right direction. And sometimes we need to go down a path of not feeling great so that we will make a more empowered choice. I haven't always made the greatest choices for myself, but I have always learned along the way, and I know that I'm getting stronger and stronger every day. Okay, so we're going to go to break shortly. Please, um, if you're, you're tuning in, just tuning in now, or you're having to tune out early, or you're just tuning in uh, through a repeat of the show, please connect with me on Facebook. I'm, I'm doing lots of promotions, workshops, and so on. Also through my webpage, you can uh, go to my website, and from there you can listen to these shows again, get updates on what's going on, and, and connect with me. And I'm, I'm, I look forward to supporting you and helping you move forward. Okay, so we're going to go to break, and uh, looking forward to some more calls after the break or some more emails. Okay, thank you. 
Hey, welcome back, everyone. This is Christine, your host. And if you're just tuning in, we're talking about feelings and the power that they have in our lives, how to use them for our benefit and not to allow them to take over for us. They are only a signpost on your path of life, people, and they can be a wonderful signpost if you will allow them to be. I really want to encourage everyone to see that your past is your past and you can let go of it and move forward, but use it as a as a map. When you're looking at something and you're, you're pointing to something and you're saying, I didn't like that feeling, I didn't like that experience, you have the power to make a different choice. But if you stay looking at, if you stay stuck and you stay focused on that negative experience, that negative feeling by gossiping, complaining, reviewing it with 150 people that you know in your life, blogging about it, tweeting about it, Facebooking about it, if you keep... Doing that, guaranteed, you will still have a negative feeling about it. You know, thoughts have no power until we attach feelings to them. And if you want to keep feeling bad, keep talking about it, keep talking about it, keep blogging about it, keep gossiping about it, keep complaining about it, and watch what happens. If you want to move in a better direction, use that bad feeling, that negative feeling, that uncomfortable, anxious feeling as a sign that I want to feel better. I'm disconnected from my joy. And start asking yourself questions. Well, if I don't want that, then what do I want? And sometimes that doesn't come up quickly. But if you continue to ask yourself and focus in on what do I want, what do I want, and even looking around your life, looking at the people you work with, looking at your friends' lives, looking at what other people have and say, yeah, I think I'd like that and maybe I'd like that. Think of life as a banquet and you get to go up to the table and choose what you want. You are more powerful and more gifted than you know and you can move your life in a better direction. Remember that your feelings are connected to your beliefs and if you are having a bad feeling, Maybe do some work about what your beliefs are. If you don't know, if, if this is just you know something that's very, very challenging, why not hire a life coach? That's what I do. There are many life coaches out there. There's an amazing people out there that can support you and help you to move forward. I work with clients all over. I have clients you know, in Europe. I have clients in the U.S. I have clients across Canada. You, When you work with people that have been down this path where you're struggling, they can help you. That's what a life coach can do. Remember that the feelings that you're feeling, oftentimes what is, is keeping you stuck and the barriers that you might be experiencing in your life are one of four feelings. They're either criticism, resentment, fear, or guilt. Those are the most common areas of feeling emotions that keep us stuck and if you can begin to go on a discovery of what do i believe that is holding me here and you can see that by your feelings then you can begin to peel away at what's happening and you can start to make different choices so that you can have a different experience. This is not always easy, but it is simple. And through persistence, you can move in that direction. I have been alive now for 49 years, I'm very proud to say. And for many of those years, I have been digging. I have been digging to get to a better place in my life. It has not always been easy, but I am so grateful that I continued. You know what happens with a lot of us is we take our feelings and we shove them down. We shove them down, we shove them down, we shove them down. And what happens is that eventually they explode. They explode into a verbal explosion with other people or they might turn around and they might... Uh, come into us, explode into a disease. We can actually, if we stay in a negative place with these feelings, we can actually attract to us diseases because our body is feeling those emotions. They are reacting to our feelings. So it's very, very important we pay attention to what are we doing with our feelings. Remember, no feeling is bad it only is positive or negative, and you can move into a better place. Now, when you have a feeling and you shove it down, you don't move through it, and that's how you can stay stuck. But if you can be brave enough, and you can be gentle enough with yourself, and you can see yourself as just 
taking one step at a time and start looking at how you're feeling, you can begin to move into a better direction. Now, I, I did have a, more questions. I'm sorry I didn't get to them. One of the questions that I do want to speak to is what do I do? This is from Nan, and she says, how do I shift how I'm feeling and how do I stay in a calm place when people bring me their negative energies and push my buttons? Well, Nan, they didn't create those buttons. The way that you are reacting to what they're doing or their negative energy is your choice. Now, what I will tell you is if you can just hold the space, do some breathing while they have their negative energy around you, you can take back the power. If you can look at your friend or your colleague or your neighbor and you can see that they are on their path and they're doing the best that they can and you can try to see them in their best possible light, you will less take on their stuff and you will be able to stand quietly and gently in your place. You do have the power to whether you're going to react to or not to the way other people are being. Remember that you have the power and only you to have your experiences. Now, two books that I wanted to um, suggest to you, everyone today, and you can catch these on my website at inspiredchoices.ca. The one, one of the very first books that I ever um, started to read is by Dr. Wayne Dyer, and it's Seven, Ten Secrets for Success and Inner Peace. It's an awesome book. It's an easy read. It's something that you can pick up for two minutes right before you go to bed, as soon as you wake up in the morning, and it will help to lead you on your path. Remember, the last thing you do before you go to bed and the first thing you do in the morning will help to set your conscious mind, which will feed into your subconscious mind. So if you want to change the direction you're going, take control of what you're feeding into your brain. Just like you take control of what you're feeding into your body, people, you can take control of what you're feeding into your brain and change your feelings and your experiences, okay? Another fabulous book that I was so inspired by is Michael J. Fox, Always Looking Up. Michael J. Fox, most of us will know, of course, his story and where he's been and what he's been doing. He's an amazing person. And how he looks at his experiences and how he chooses to feel and experience his experiences are creating, continuing to create a life that he loves. Next week when we get together, we're going to be talking about change is not a four-letter word. I really would love to hear from you what your thoughts are about the show today and what you would love to hear about. It is an amazing experience this life we're having, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to speak with and share with you. And if you would like to connect with me, please contact me at Christine at InspiredChoices.ca or on Facebook at Inspired Choices Inc. And I'm always running contests contest there and love connecting with people all the best and we'll see you next week and remember you always have a choice